coming. I know how it was. It was far, and you know, and you all know that I'm unemployed, right? <laughs> yeah, it's turned me into a different kind of person. I'm, I'm not as, uh, I'm turning into a wimp, really. I, I, I'm asking 15 year olds to buy me beer. <laughs> yeah, I went into a department store and I, and I saw this guy shoplifting and I went over to him and I said, hey, use my bag, it's bigger. <laughs> Yeah, he gets it. But you know, any of you guys have animals? Any of you? Pets? All right, let's hear it for the pets. Hey, I have, a, I have a dog. I have a lovely dog. His name is Oso. Oso the dog, which means bear in Spanish. And I love that dog. I do. I love him from the chronic pink eye that he has to the uh, big old growth that hangs under his tail. It's <laughs> just. <laughs> It kind of like dangles back and forth like a shoulder up old loose condom. It's, it's disgusting when he walks. If you can call it, he does walking because, you know, he's got severe arthritis and hip dysplasia. And uh, he also has a chronic yeast infection that's all from his chest and his stomach into his crotchal area. I mean, he's smelling like, well, vomit, poop, and curry powder. That's pretty much what he smells like. So we asked him to leave the dinner table, and he got all indignant. You know, I'm like, just leave. He's like, sure, why not? He turned into a uh, Meryl Streep in uh, August Osage County. He was really ugly. Yeah, really mean. And so uh, now every time he comes back from a walk, I have to check his paws for drugs. He's just, you know, he, he wears this bandana. Not because he's artistic, oh no, not because he's artistic, but actually he has this crooked wiener, so when he pees it always looks like a Christmas tree. <laughs> but no, he wears this bandana because he has massive amount of spit when he drinks. It was the last straw, finally, when he was pawing through my purse trying to get money for drugs, so I said, that's it, so. I put it down! Oh, oh come on! You guys, we keep our animals alive way too long, with all due respect. Sometimes it's just the part where you have to say no. I was raised in the 60s, okay? And when you're raised in the 60s, life is tough. It is. There was actually a drink that was made, a pre-sweetened drink that was made, and it was called Funny Face. <laughs> Do you know Funny Face? It was the most racist, stereotype dru uh, drug. Listen, I'm talking about Oso. It was the most racist drink you could ever imagine. And the names of the flavors were Goofy Grape, <laughs> Freckle Face Strawberry. Guess who that was? Me. I wasn't even a ginger, and I had that, I had that label. I was Freckle Face Strawberry from then until I was in my, well, what's today? Yeah, from like yesterday. I was the freckle-faced strawberry. They had loudmouth lime, who was the disabled kid. You know, they had, you know, uh, rootin' tootin' raspberry. That was the kid with ADD. Whatever, whatever. I was really, you know, now, man, you can't even say that in school. But so, yeah, so be raised in the 60s. I had a single mom, and uh, I had an older sister. She's kind of a bully. And we all lived together in the San Fernando Valley in a house that was going to be foreclosed on. So we lived at the end of a cul-de-sac. And at the end of the cul-de-sac, which was another word for a dead end, my, my mom, she, uh, you know, she had no actual skills. She was, you know, she had no training. So what she did was what any good single mom would do at the time with a great set of legs and a can-do pep step attitude with a real party girl flair to her, she became a cocktail waitress. Yes, she did. And so at the dead end, on that street, my mom would walk out around, you know, 6 p.m. and go to work. And she'd be in go-go boots and fishnet stockings and really short mini skirts. And uh, then there would be the women that were actual stay-at-home moms. The whores leaving again. 
on the upper deck. I see what she's wearing. Do you see that? Oh my God. And of course, we didn't have real babysitters at the time either because no one really paid for babysitters, so we had the neighborhood pedophile. I mean, he was always available, right? He had, you know, he had, uh, he always had, he didn't charge us much, and uh, he always brought candy. So at one point, my, we said to our mom, Mom, we don't want little Ricky watching us anymore. And she's like, oh, why not? And of course, there was a lot of denial in the 60s, too. Because he always wants to look at our underwear. Oh, he does not. Okay, well, here's what you're going to do. You're going to wear long pants around little Ricky and always keep the dog with you. That'll help. So that's what we did. And then finally we're like, no, no, no more little Ricky. And as she was traipsing off to go to work, what happened was that the moms, God forbid they ever help, you know, a single mom in the neighborhood and say, hey, you need some help, Wilma? And what's with the name Wilma? You know, we don't name our kids Wilma anymore. We don't name them Edith or Edna or Florence or Ethel. Those are pretty goddamn sexy names, if you ask me. Hey, Wilma. Okay, I digress. So, so anyways, we're we're sitting there, my sister and I, and all of a sudden, a uh, sheriff pulls up, and we did what any two kids would do at the time: we turn off the lights, turn off the TV, and hit under the bed. You know, right? And that lasted for you know, good six months or so, and then finally he pulls up. Okay, I know you're in there. Oh my God, those are in here. What are you gonna do? And my sister, being bigger, said, "Go answer the door." No, answer the door. So I open the door, and right in front of me is this gigantic belt buckle and a gun. Is your mother home? Let me in. Okay. So we let him in. He says, "Where is she?" Working. You have a phone? Mm-hmm. So he comes into our girl sanctuary where we have our princess telephone and he uses it to call our mother. Yes, I'd like to speak with Wilma Wart, please. This is Officer Olson. Nice curtain she got. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Is this Wilma Wart? Mm-hmm. Yes, well, why aren't you here? Oh, you're working? Yeah. Where? At the Galaxy? I know the Galaxy. On Mission Street? Okay, so you drive that Thunderbird? You're the one that wears the red miniskirts? Okay, so what I'm going to do? What time do you get off? 11? All right, I'm going to go over there, and we're going to discuss this there. All right, thank you. Okay, he hangs up the phone. This is what we're going to do, you two. I'm going to walk out that door, you're going to close it, lock it, and keep the dog with you, all right? And that's what child services was back in the 60s. Yeah. It was a lot different, and then we started calling him Uncle Officer Olsen. He became our best friend. But um, there's a couple other things. We, we live in Gallery where i got, what, about 30 seconds left, and... Um, you guys, there are models there, and I just want to say, are there any models in the house? No, you know why? Because they're too busy starving themselves, eating fingernails and cotton balls. It's not funny. They, you know, when they eat, they hate themselves, and when they don't eat, they hate everyone else. So if you're gonna if you're gonna go with a model, just know you're never gonna be happy. And and I and you know every one of us tries to struggle with this weight thing. But it, you know that's a whole different subject. And I only got like 30 seconds left. So I want to tell you all, thank you very much for coming out. I appreciate it.